Hi everyone, it's Brenda back again with another episode of Three Uniques. Today I have on Katrin Van Outsten. Did I say that correctly? Almost. Say <laughs> it one more time for us. Out Houston. Catherine out Houston. Van Out Houston. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's Houston. a long name. <laughs> so Catherine's from Frankfurt and I should say hi Kath hi Catherine. How are you? Hi Brenda. Thank you for having me. I'm fine. It's great to have you here. Thanks for letting me fumble through that last part of your name there. I appreciate that. Um so yeah, so Catherine uh, Catherine is out of Frankfurt, Germany. Uh she's a management and organizational development consultant. She's also a new author. So we're gonna talk a little bit about her book today. And she practices selfless servant leadership. Correct. <laughs> what, else know, what, uh, what else should we know about you? Well, um, I'm not actually from Frankfurt, although I live here now. So I have a long international um, background. Uh, grew up in Bangkok in Thailand with a typical expat. Um, uh, youth and went to international school, uh, which is where the American accent comes from. Okay. Um, and I'm originally from Belgium, so my family is from Belgium, and that's why I went back in, in when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of studied and worked in the Netherlands, and then in 2008, I moved to Germany. Okay. But um, what I'm really happy about is this international situation now with everything happening online and the online coaching that I'm doing. I'm sort of back to my roots because this is the international environment that I grew up in. Um, so I'm super happy about that. I feel like I've come home. That's amazing. What a great, um, what a great life story too, to bring you, um, to this point in time. And just like you said, from a coaching international and everything's online. So, so talk to me a little bit about how you came into like selfless servant leadership and what that is for our listeners. Yeah. So I have a 20 year, um, work experience in, in the classical, you know, change management, um, organizational development and coaching from, from. 2006, pretty much when I started, I was interested in coaching, de people development, my own development. Um, and all of that kind of, you know, I went through the classical, um, the jobs, um, the different positions and, and everything around um, management consulting, internal stuff. So you could say a, a traditional, possibly traditional career. But I was very unhappy um, with that because um, I found change to be pretty much impossible. Okay. <laughs> my own change. Um, so, so the, the core feeling of not being good enough and, um, not being okay in the world, um, as well as improving the situation in organizations, you know, for people and how they work together, I also found extremely disappointing. Mm. Um, and this didn't change until I found something that's called non-duality or, um, philosophy, I guess philosophy it's, it's the core of lots of spiritual and religious traditions, okay. but it's not spiritual. Um, which is about discovering our true self. So beyond the ego, beyond the separate self. Right. And at some point I was able to bridge that. So bring that into the work environment because I discovered it for myself. And over time, like over the course of 10 years and really studying and deepening my own understanding of that, mm -hmm. this evolved into an approach to leadership. So combining these elements of leadership, which I'd been observing for 16 years in advising executives, yeah. the non-dual part and, and the coaching created this, what's now, you know, my core offering, which is coaching for, for selfless leadership, selfless servant leadership. Right. What a lovely story. And you've done some work with um, Byron Katie. So yeah, that was that thread through your work now. Right. Byron Katie, um, for those who don't know, she um, has a process called the work, which is questioning beliefs. So it's it's a starting to understand that you, we have limiting beliefs. We, you know, our ego, our identity is made up of various beliefs that we have, right. our conditioning. And she teaches an approach to start questioning that. And this was back in 2011. I discovered that I did her school for the work. And this is a nine day intensive program. Mm -hmm. um, questioning your beliefs for nine days straight. And this really shifted something for me. So it was the start of discovering and, and going into this whole non-dual path. So um, starting to discover the identity, all this not, not feeling, you know, feeling I'm not good enough, the limiting beliefs, that that was just the, the shell, the outer shell of my identity. Um, and discovering this whole path of, um, well, what is it that we really are beyond, beyond the ego, beyond this identity? And... Um, 
yeah, that's uh, it's it's an amazing discovery, amazing path that I, I now I'm trying to bridge that, or that's what I do. I bridge it into the into the executive, into the leadership world, and very excited about it too. Uh, what a great opportunity to do work with her that way and immerse yourself, like you said, in nine days. It's, it sounds like it's a pretty intensive program. And even for when I watched like YouTube talks with her or read some of her books, it's um, yeah, I would say that that would probably be a really intensive experience, but unearthing, right? And just getting to the sort of the core, the essential piece of who you are. So once I think you can identify that, then it's just like all those things that maybe you've been holding yourself back on from doing, it's like now you can fully show up, which is exciting. Yes. And it's, it's actually, it's even so much more because um, as human beings, we've misidentified with our egos. Mm. So we've sort of come to learn, you know, okay, you're Brenda, uh, you have certain attributes and characteristics and, and beliefs, mm -hmm. and that's who you are. But at the same time, there's always a part of you that's observing this. So there's the experiencer of your experience. Right. And this is what in the non-dual tradition, they call it awareness. So mm -hmm. your awareness of your life and the shift that can happen is that you start to identify with the awareness instead of your body and your mind. Right. And that drastically increases the, um, or it expands your awareness and, and your concept of who you are really. Wow. Again, what a beautiful experience for you to have to go through, oh, like not have to, but for you to experience. That's, that's incredible. And how has your work contributed to now the release of your book? Let's, let's talk a little bit about your book. What is it? Where can people find it? What's going to be the essential pieces that they'll learn from it? Yeah, so the easy answer is it's on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I tried to do in the book is um, write down as much of my coaching process as I could in a one-to-many format, right? So it's, it's, it's a book. Um, and I wrote down the exact practices that I use in, in coaching because what I've specialized in is, is a type of self-inquiry practice that shows you these things that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. what you are beyond the ego for yourself. So it's a it's it's not really meditation. It's a type of contemplation where you look at your life, your own direct experience, and figure things out for yourself. Um, so that's in the book, along with enough theory or background to know, you know, to help you know what you're looking for. So the book is really actually quite short. It's only 147 pages. Okay. Um, like and that. really practical. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, what is the minimum that I need to write down? Mm -hmm. so that people could do this on their own without having access to me. Right. Um, yeah, and it has some case studies, you know, some leadership case studies, but it's pretty much that's it. It's the coaching process in a one-to-many format with as much as I can give in book form without coaching people directly. I love it. And it's called Servant Leadership. Selfless Leadership, oh. Awakening, a guide to awakening the servant leadership, uh, the servant leader within. Because these two terms, um, I don't know if you if you're familiar with the servant leadership literature. Um, this I am, was, but maybe just you know again define it for everyone listening. <laughs> yeah, so this was kind of redefined, or or it started with Robert Greenleaf in in 1975. I think mm -hmm. um, he wrote this this seminal essay on the topic, and it has um, this version of servant leadership is is the leader as servant, so with an attitude of I I serve others first. Um, I put the interest of others first, and I am in the role of leadership as a service. Um, and this this philosophy um, comes from a, you could say, a moral point of view. So this it's a good thing to be, you know. And we're supposed to develop ourselves in that direction direction as human beings right. if we find this valuable. Um, what I discovered with the non-dual approach is that our core as human beings, every single human being is already selfless because our core is beyond the ego, mm -hmm. beyond the self. Mm -hmm. So logically, you know, if you're not stuck within the self, you are selfless, you are beyond it. Right. And then automatically, if you're not no longer interested in the self, because the interest disappears in, you know, you're no longer interested in something that you've seen to be an illusion. Mm. So naturally you become more interested in others and a greater whole and serving that instead of serving your self-interest. Right. So the really crucial thing is that it's no longer something we need to aspire to and work towards and kind of morally train ourselves towards. 
right. but it's something that we find within the yeah, core like within. Unlock yeah, it. we unlock it, uncover yeah. it. Because of some conditioning or some, you know, schooling or, you know, direction that yeah. we've received in life, we've closed that door. But it's like we actually already exactly. have it in us. So Yes, yes, yes. And so all I do really is help people see that for themselves in a way that is so clear for them that they then no longer have to doubt that and that living the servant leadership ideal becomes effortless. Love it. Okay. And so your book is already out. Yes. Like yes. On Amazon. All right. Well, we'll make sure that we have the link in the show notes so people can get it that way. And you're here today also to share your three uniques with us. So yes. I'd love to hear them. <laughs> well, you're probably not surprised to hear it's a mixture of, of what we've been talking about. So um, since I first got interested in coaching 2006, long time ago, um, I discovered that one of my core I guess skills is um, guiding other people to, to self-reflection through self-reflection to self-understanding, self-insight. And this has come together now with this, this coaching approach that I have at the moment. So it's this, what you'd call, I don't know, I guess you'd call it like being a mirror for people. Mm, um, so a mirror, but, so, but a mirror that makes it even more clear to themselves that, than what they would normally see. Right. Um, and so I don't know if that has like one word, but I guess it's guidance, um, being a guide. Um, and the second one um, is a, a love for the truth. Mm -hmm. But um, I've had this since also since I was a small child. And I remember as a te teenager, I was writing in my journal, you know, meaning and the, the purpose of life is meaning wow. <laughs> in these huge letters you know and reading philosophy and and spirituality and all this stuff it's been with me as long as I can remember that's, that's um, fabulous yeah although I don't have a like religious upbringing I had nothing you know I'm not baptized there's nothing there and I had no access to spiritual stuff at all mm -hmm. but um that's what I I love about the non-dual approach it's it uses our higher reasoning, you know, it uses the mind right. to look at the truth of existence. Um, so this, this core of wanting to know the truth and wanting to live the truth of what it means to be human, mm -hmm. um, that would be number two. Well, and I love that because, I mean, regardless of the fact of you following like an organized religion or a doctrine for, um, for an example, I mean, really, when you think about organized religion, that's what it is. Like a group of human beings coming together to seek the truth on what, yeah. you know, what was ever, you know, bothering them at the time. And, you know, and then they rallied around other people, recruiting other people into it. It's not dissimilar to like an organization also creating a product or a service for, although there might be some people that are listening and going, no, Brenda, it's not that at all. <laughs> I agree. So I don't want to get into a religious debate, but <clears throat> excuse me. But I think that the idea, the premise behind an organized religion is a group of people that are trying to seek the truth on something. And then share it with other people once they realize what the truth is. So I think it's just, again, like when you talk about unlocking that um, selfless servant leadership, it's actually built within us to seek the truth, to seek to understand. Um, that's why we're here as humans. You know, we have historical reference point of, you know, humans exploring new, new lands, new opportunities, new ways of innovating and problem solving. So it's just part of our core essence to do that. Definitely. And it's been, it's, I think only in the last hundred years, it's been ignored in the sense of no longer, you know, being pushed out of our lives. Yeah. Um, well, I think we just probably got into like a little bit of a routine, like a routine and sometimes routines are good, but that, that you know, they can obviously cause some type of complacency too. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the third one, um, I guess is, um, what I'd call, uh, humanity. <laughs> um, it's maybe a bit of a big term, but it's, it's an interest in, in, although, I don't know, um, there's a lot of talk at the moment about kindness, kindness, empathy, compassion, and this sort of having to go through life as a loving doormat. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but there's this, this stream, and that's not what I mean by, by human. Um, I mean, in the sense of, um, celebrating that we're here in this human form and um able to experience life as a human being right um and that brings a, a quality 
being able to to um explore that celebrate that expand it mm -hmm. that's something that i find endlessly fascinating um yeah yeah and to explore that a little bit more so so i understand is it also like humans with all their you know yeah. fables, glitches you know like bad yeah. programming you know we've got to like you know all the things that you know we're celebrated for like the love the intimacy the compassion that we do have the innovation but then also the anger the frustration the i'm fed up you know <laughs> with my situation like all of those things right celebrate the humanness in all of us exactly the yeah. humanity of you know the whole experience mm -hmm. um from birth to death from uh, extreme fear to extreme ecstasy yeah. everything in between and and everything we're here to experience yeah. Uh, there's another practitioner out there, Susan David, who's been talking a lot about emotions, right? Yes. And recognizing yes. the emotions. Like it kind of goes back to like when we were little and it's like we fall off our bike and skin our knee and, you know, our parent or our primary caregiver said to us, don't cry. Right. right. It's like, well, actually cry. Yeah. Like yeah. experience it. And I think that's the other thing. I So I, I now I understand because I, I do see the messages too, like the memes on Instagram, like just be kind. I'm like, well, yeah. it's bigger than that. Like if you are angry, feel the anger. But also, yeah, and do, you have a, do you have a way to navigate that anger, right? So you're not acting out behaviorally on somebody else and impacting their day poorly, but that you can actually like turn that anger into something where it's now doing something good, right? Like, do you learn from that anger? Yeah, and um, I mean, kindness and unkindness are both part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that kindness is often from a place of ego. So it's about how can I make myself feel good about myself in, you know, because I'm kind to other people. Right. So there are always all these different levels, but yeah, that's what I find fascinating. The whole thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. So who in your life has been um, instrumental in helping you? Cause you said like, even from a spirituality standpoint, this is something that not necessarily people told you that you had to do, or you were following a specific doctrine that you fell into it yourself, but you know, over your lifespan to date, has there been anyone that's been like a mentor or a guide or, you know, your coach that's like really helped you, um, you know, go after these unique that you have? It, it would be a, a super long list um, of people who all contributed different things. And mm -hmm. I'm unbelievably indebted to the, to the authors who write about non-duality. Mm -hmm. There are many modern, thinkers in that area who, you know, uh, who try to bring this to a broader public. And I read over a thousand books, really wow. literally over a thousand books on, on these subjects and kind of binge, binge read <laughs> this, this stuff. So there's so many authors there who, who took the time to put that into words and who have uh, videos and meetings mm -hmm. um, online, too many to mention. Um, but I also had individual coaching with quite a few uh, people. Mm -hmm. um, in the same sense that I do now. So, so to help me validate my own insights, like, is this really what's going on? Is this really, you know, is this the truth? Right. Um, so I can't give you uh, a list of names or I could, but it would take very long. Okay. <laughs> as soon as you said a thousand authors, I was already like, yeah, that'll be like a five hour podcast. <laughs> right. So, so um, that's okay. <laughs> that's totally fine. And I think that if people are interested in learning more about non-duality about your work around selfless servant leadership they can obviously pick up your book they can reach out to you and yes you know and then maybe you might share that list of a thousand authors that you want to <laughs> if they want to pursue that as well yeah and i have i have a list of recommended reading in the book precisely oh, okay. for that reason right so what would be my like my top 10 people to go to uh, first if you want to learn more right okay okay great so and uh, again another sort of cue to buy the book um if i was a brand new leader so i've been in like leadership roles. Well, I go back in sort of like my leadership journey to like when I was 10, 12 years old, when I used to be in brownies and girl guides, um, I was like, you know, asked to be like a leader of my group of like five or six mm. girls and, um, and help get them to become a better brownie. And, you know, so it's like, I can go back in time and sort of identify when I was in those leadership roles, but for someone new in leadership, and I think, you know, like the work that you do, or say the work that I do, there's some cross parallels there where I look at there's a deficit of leadership in the world. Some of the things that we're obviously dealing with right now, the last yes. two years, like that most people can kind of like understand and 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 uh, have some compassion or empathy towards is 
we're here because in some cases there's a deficit of leadership. I can use that as sort of a common denominator. If I was new into leadership, brand spanking new, I've got a team of people that I'm responsible for. What like crystal clear piece of advice would you give me? Understand yourself first. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's absolutely essential that we go within first instead of we're, we're trained to focus on the outside. Yeah. Right. So immediately we're like, okay, this is my team. What do I do to them? You know, and it's, it's yeah. all phrased in positive language. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> how do I grow them? Ultimately it's like, how do I get the most out of these people? Yeah. yeah. But it's like words, you know, these, these, these horrible words that I don't like, like, how do I grow them? How do I develop them? How do I, I mean, they have positive, there's a positive intention behind them. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's fine. But um, the problem is that this is all and before we see through our ego construct, mm -hmm. the ego um, hijacks these things. So then it's like, okay, I'm going to be this great leader. I'm going to be this great new servant leader, maybe uh, with my new team. And I'm going to grow these people and serve them and help them. And it's one big attack on these people, <laughs> you know, these poor people, they're like, no, <laughs> leave me alone. I don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and definitely not by you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, or like, you know, it becomes a bit of a, like a savior, like you said, the ego, but it becomes a bit of a savior. Complex. Yes. You, you actually won't grow if you don't have a relationship with me, your boss. And yeah. if we don't connect, if there isn't necessarily a synergy. Right. So I love that. And it's, uh, yeah, it's like, if everyone just spent a little bit more time working on themselves. Yeah. Except no working. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because um, the working again, it has this um, Puritan, you know, you're, you're, you're not okay the way you are and you need to improve. And I know that's not how you mean it, but that often has, that's how we've been conditioned. Yeah. So there's often, and we have to start somewhere, right? So it's okay if we start there, but I think that's really important as well was a key change within me as well. You're perfect the way you are. Mm -hmm. The thing is finding out what you are <laughs> instead of believing what you think you are. Um, so it's more, as we said in the beginning, this process of uncovering what's already there instead of, um, oh, I need to develop myself into this thing that I'm not yet. Okay. I'm buying your book this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I, well, I mean, I attract folks like you into my orbit for a reason, because I also yeah. believe in the work that you're talking about and also people identifying what makes them unique. Cause again, a lot of times people come to me and says, well, I don't know what makes me unique. I don't know if I can make a business out of this. I don't know, like, you know, and there's this confusion or this perplexity and it's just like, look within yourself. Yeah. And it's not like, again, it has to be something that's going to be productive that you can monetize. Like that will come like how you get that into a business format that somebody else on the planet is going to buy. And, and, you know, there's 7.8 billion people on this planet. Like how many customers do you really need? Um, you know, do you need all of them? Like, and not all of them may want your product or your service. So that's okay too. Um, but feel good about what makes you unique and spend some time with that. Yeah. And, and the way to uncover that is, is to look within because otherwise we're putting the, the horse in front of the cart, you know, we're saying like, this is what we want to achieve. And right. then we start to look, okay, I'm, I'm, here's my deficit and that that's not there yet. And that's not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and when we take the opposite route, so, so when we look within first, then we find what's already there and express that, then we don't get all these problems of, okay, you know, I have to produce something or, yeah, or create something. Yeah. My, my good enough, my worthy enough. Yeah. Yeah. Mind. Yes. Right. Okay. Good. I love this. Um, what's a ritual or a practice that you have to keep yourself grounded in the work that you believe in? So the really cool thing about seeing these insights, and I have like four, four key insights in the book, but these are non-dual insights so that what we really are is, is beyond the ego, is that you, you stop needing stuff like that. Mm. Because um, it's just, you know, there's, there's my character going on, which is um, what we've been trained. Okay, I need to do this, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I just watch it talk. <laughs> so, uh, for me now, it's it's I get up, I, I get in front of the computer, things start happening, um, words come out, coaches appear, coaching appears, um, LinkedIn posts appear. Right. So so it's a type of um, flow that I've always dreamt about or thought about and was trying to achieve, 
And the paradox is, is that when you stop wanting it and see that it's impossible to achieve, it emerges by itself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I use always the example um, when I go out and buy a blue car and then I'm driving to the city and now I see all these blue cars. And I yeah. wonder, where did, where did all these blue cars come from? They were always already there. Right. There were already blue cars on the planet. I just happened to buy one and then now I see them there. But it's kind of like that recognition of like when I don't necessarily think about it too hard, it starts coming to me. Yeah. So so one of the key um, problems what we learn with at the age of 18 months, more or less, is that we have a life and we're supposed to make something out of it. Mm -hmm. Like you're Brenda, you're Brenda. <laughs> this is your life. Make it make it good, whatever good means in your right. culture. And then you spend your whole life working towards that, you know, the could be the Ferrari and, and, and the other stuff, or it could be just a great career, um, whatever it is that, that you're supposed to achieve. Um, but what we knew before and what we have to relearn is that we actually don't have control over our lives. Things just happen. You know, we're being lived just like a tree is treeing or a cat is catting. It doesn't, you know, the cat doesn't sit there planning out its life and mapping out its career and thinking, oh, no, I need, you know, I need to catch mice in a better way. Or, or it's absurd when we think about it like that, that we humans are the same. Only we've we've made this whole, you know, psychological entity out of ourselves that is now obsessed with achieving and improving and creating when we really don't have that power. I love the cat analogy. <laughs> <laughs> there's it's in my book. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, there's moments where it's just like, yeah, how much do we need to plan out, right? The lists, all these. To things. plan, to do, to force, to strive, to will, to, you know, the morning routine we need to have, the, the 50 great relationships, the mentor. It's endless. Right. It's really endless. Yeah, absolutely. So, Katrin, if I was to give you a billboard and you could put it anywhere on the planet, what would it say and where would you put it? Where would I put it? Wow. <laughs> uh, it would say um, stop and look within. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I guess I'd put it on the Internet somewhere. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> on the Big Google button. start page on the, on the Google start page. Okay. <laughs> Ask Google to put it up for a day for you. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Katrin, it's been uh, wonderful getting to know you and learning about your three uniques today. Where can people find you? Um, yeah. So I have a website, which is my name .com. <laughs> Okay. All right. We'll make sure that's in the show notes. <laughs> and I'm on LinkedIn a lot. So mm -hmm. I post every day and um, I'm easy to find there. Okay. Um, and that's where I do most of my connecting with the world um, right. at the moment. Yeah, that's where you um, and I got connected. So, yeah, yeah. And then my book is on Amazon. So those are kind of the three ways to to um, to reach me. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on today. And for everyone listening, as I always say, there's 7.8 billion people on this planet. Get out there and share your three uniques. Thanks, Katrin. Thank you. <laughs>